Howdy folks, what is the chromatic number of a complete graph on n vertices? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. In a previous lesson, we introduced graph colorings, chromatic numbers of graphs, and some other related terminology. I'll leave a link to that lesson in the description, so if you need a quick recap, you can check that out. Now we're going to begin to take a look at the chromatic numbers of certain families of graphs, beginning with complete graphs in this lesson. Now remember that a coloring of a graph is an assignment of colors to the vertices of the graph so that adjacent vertices are colored differently. With that in mind, if you start to think about it, I think you'll find that the solution to this problem is pretty straightforward. It's straightforward enough that we're going to jump right into the general solution and then just for kicks we'll look at a specific example right after. So let's just take two vertices, two arbitrary vertices from a complete graph Kn. So we'll say let u and v be elements of the vertex set of the complete graph on n vertices Kn. Now of course we're interested in how many colors we'll need to color the different vertices of the graph, so let's take a look at what happens if u and v are different vertices. If u is not equal to v, so u and v are distinct vertices, whoops, I wrote u twice. If u is not equal to v, what do we know about u and v? Well, since they're in a complete graph, by definition, if they're distinct vertices, they've got to be adjacent. So if u is not equal to v, then u and v are adjacent, which we can write as u v is an element of the edge set of our complete graph Kn. Now what does that mean if u and v are adjacent when we talk about colorings? Well, if u and v are adjacent, they have to be colored differently. And this, my friends, is the crux of the idea for this particular problem. What we've just pointed out is that in a complete graph, different vertices have to be colored differently because different vertices in a complete graph are always adjacent, so they always have to be colored differently. This means all of the n different vertices in the graph Kn will need their own color. And so, as you might suspect, the chromatic number of a complete graph on n vertices is n. But let's just take it a little bit more slowly to get a better idea of how we typically have to solve these problems. What we've basically shown is that we're going to need n different colors for, for the purposes of coloring the graph Kn. So that means that the chromatic number chi of the complete graph Kn is certainly greater than or equal to n. Let me rewrite that n because that n looks kind of bad. In order to show that the chromatic number of a graph is equal to a particular number, in this case n, you can think of it as a two-step process where the order of the steps doesn't matter. We've got to show that the chromatic number is at least this particular number, in this case n, so we need at least this many colors to color the graph. And then we need to show that this many is in fact enough. And in combination, that shows that this is the minimum number of possible colors that we need to color the graph, which is the chromatic number of the graph. So certainly we need at least n colors to color Kn, since all of the vertices need to be colored differently. Is n colors enough? Well, of course it is. If we color all of the n vertices with different colors, then any adjacent vertices will have to be colored differently because all the vertices are colored differently. And so in total, we can conclude that the chromatic number of the complete graph on n vertices, Kn, is equal to n. That's the minimum number of colors necessary to color a complete graph on n vertices because all the vertices are adjacent, so they all got to be colored differently. And in fact, of course, we can color any graph that has n vertices. We can color any graph with n vertices with n colors. If all the vertices are colored differently, adjacent vertices will certainly be colored differently as well. So this is a very simple upper bound for the chromatic number of all graphs. And it just so happens to be the exact chromatic number for complete graphs. So with all that said, let's just finish things off by taking a look at a coloring of a specific complete graph. We'll take a look at the complete graph that I think is easiest to draw but also kind of interesting to look at, which is the complete graph on four vertices. 
So here's our complete graph, K4. Now our discussion just a moment ago tells us that we should need precisely four colors in order to color this complete graph. And if we go ahead and try to do it, we'll see that's true. Perhaps we start with this vertex here and we color it one. Then we know since this is a complete graph, every other vertex has to be adjacent to the vertex we just colored. So no vertex can also be colored one. No other vertex can also be colored one. We know we'll have to break out a new color for the next vertex. Maybe we color it two. Again, since this is a complete graph, we know that the other vertices have to be adjacent to both of the vertices that we've already colored. So again, we're gonna need a new color for the next vertex. Perhaps we color it three. And then again, this last vertex, we know it's adjacent to all the vertices we've already colored, one, two, and three, since this is a complete graph, so we'll have to break out another new color, and we might color this four. And so clearly, every time we go to color a new vertex in a complete graph, we need a new color. The chromatic number of a complete graph on n vertices is n. In this particular case, we see the chromatic number of k4 is certainly going to be equal to 4. We need four colors to color the graph. So I encourage you to take some time to think about the chromatic numbers of other families of graphs, perhaps some path graphs or bipartite graphs or uh, cycle graphs. Let me know what you think down in the comments and we'll talk about all this more in future lessons. Hope this video helped you understand what the chromatic number of complete graphs is. Let me know in the comments if you got any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'd really appreciate a small donation on PayPal or small monthly pledge on Patreon. I'll leave links to both of those things in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.